Looking back at God of War 2018, now it's clear that one of the biggest jobs the game had was to set up things for its sequel. Multiple questions are raised and then left unanswered throughout the game. And with God of War Ragnarok being the last game in the series' Norse saga, ideally it should be answering all of them. Here, we're going to go over a few questions we have from the first game that we're hoping will be answered in Ragnarok. Note, this feature contains full spoilers of God of War 2018. The Horn Somebody just called the serpent. This is a question that has been driving God of War fans nuts for over three years now. Halfway through the game, as Kratos is bringing a sick Atreus to Freya's house, some mysterious unknown character blows the horn that summons the world serpent, and then we never find out who it was. Theories about who this person could have been can be found in abundance, of course, with one of the more popular ones being that time travel is involved. And knowing how much God of War loves time travel, it's hard to discount that theory. Faye in spite of never having appeared on screen once throughout the entire game, except as a covered up corpse in the beginning of the game, Faye casts a massive shadow over God of War 2018's story, and the revelation at the end that she was a giant and basically led Kratos and Atreus throughout the entire journey all the way to Jotunheim really cements how crucial she is to the plot, but there are still so many questions about her. How did she and Kratos meet? Under what circumstances did she die? Was the only reason Baldur was after her that he wanted to kill her? And could she really foresee the future? Oh, and speaking of giants being able to see the future, the mural. One of many surprising reveals at the end of God of War 2018 following Kratos and Atreus' arrival in Jotunheim is that the giants could see the future. The two of them see various murals in the realm that seem to be depicting events that happened to Kratos and Atreus during their journey, including their battle with Baldur. The question, of course, is how they knew all of these things were going to happen. But more important, how much else did they know? Because another mural shows what looks like a dead or dying Kratos cradled in Atreus' arms. And if that prediction is correct, then the future doesn't look too bright for Kratos. Kratos' past. What lies in Kratos' future remains to be seen, but we sure as hell know that what's in the past isn't pretty. Atreus knows very little about the past, other than the fact that Kratos comes from a land named Sparta and that he killed his own father. Atreus knows basically nothing about Kratos' past, like the fact that he single-handedly left that world completely destroyed, or the fact that he killed his own wife and daughter in a blind, murderous fit, that second bit is particularly important, and it'd be interesting to see how Atreus would react to it, so here's hoping we get to see that in God of War Ragnarok. Athena God of War 2018 felt like a clean break from all of its predecessors in most ways, but it has a few elements that tie into them very strongly. From passing references of Kratos' past to, of course, the Blades of Chaos, right around the time that the Blades come back into the fray, so too does Athena. When it comes to her, though, we still have quite a few burning questions. For starters, was that even the real Athena? But was that her again in God of War 2018, or was that just a figment of Kratos' imagination? And if that was her, how much of a role, if any, is she going to play in Ragnarok? Harris Velger this isn't as much of a burning question as some of the others we've spoken about in this feature, but it's still something that has been gnawing at our minds. Harris Velger, aka that giant bird in Helheim, is hard to miss, given the fact that its massive figure looms over so much of the scenery in that realm. And yet, in God of War 2018, it only ever served the purpose of set dressing. Director Cory Barlog has indicated in the past that was originally supposed to be a boss fight in the game before being cut out, so does that mean it'll make a return in God of War Ragnarok? Will we finally get to fight and brutally kill the giant bird? The Elves Early on in the game, Kratos and Atreus' journey takes them to Alfheim, where, despite Kratos' efforts, the two of them get caught up in a conflict between the Light and Dark Elves. But when Kratos kills the King of the Dark Elves just before leaving the realm, they realize they may have misunderstood the nature of the conflict. 
clearly there's more going on here than meets the eye, and given the semi-cliffhanger that narrative arc ended on in God of War 2018, we're dying to know how it will conclude in Ragnarok. The Dragons The two dragons that Kratos and Atreus free in God of War 2018 aren't part of the main story, and given the fact that they're side quest exclusive, this obviously isn't a significant question. That needs answering, but we're still curious enough about it. Sony Santa Monica has hinted in the past that the dragons could come back in the sequel, so if they do, what role will they play? Will they still be in the side quests? Will they be boss fights, or will they somehow turn out to be allies, given the fact that Kratos and Atreus freed them from captivity? Ragnarok We know that when God of War Ragnarok kicks off, Kratos and Atreus will be trying to prevent the titular event, but of course, we also know that they're not going to succeed. Ragnarok is indeed coming, so the question is, how? If the game sticks to Norse mythology, then as soon as Fimble Winter is over, Ragnarok will kick off, during which Loki's children, the giants, Fenrir, and Jormungandr, aka the World Serpent, will kill Odin and Thor, respectively. So is that how it's going to go down in the game as well? We do know that Angraboda, the mother of the aforementioned pair of giants, is going to be in the game, which means there's a pretty good chance they will be as well. But of course, God of War has a knack for twisting the mythologies it's inspired by in interesting ways to create unexpected surprises. And it's very likely, if not guaranteed, that will be the case in God of War Ragnarok as well. God of War Ragnarok might be ending the series' Norse saga, but obviously this won't be the last game of the series. It's way too big and successful for Sony to just let it die. That, of course, means that once Kratos is done with the Norse saga, he's going to move on to another land with a new setting. The most popular theory is that the next God of War saga will use Egyptian setting, especially given the fact that's what Cory Barlog originally envisioned for the 2018 title. If that does happen though, will we begin seeing seeds of that in God of War Ragnarok? Will it directly set up Kratos' journey to the next land? Tyr's vault in the previous game has very overt references to other settings, which means he has obviously traveled between all of these realms. But is that going to come into play in God of War Ragnarok in a more direct manner that sets up the series' next saga? And with that, we reached the end of the video. Have anything to say? Let us know in the comments below. Also, we upload new videos every single day on Gaming Bolt, so please consider subscribing as it really helps us out. Thanks for watching.